Okay, we're live again, and we have audio this time, which is excellent. This is uh, TechSpin Live. Hi, I'm Rick. I'm Shane. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll look into getting some USB microphones for the future, just in yeah. case. Um, this is for the week of uh, ending on the 29th of April, 2018. We've got some great news for you today. Uh, yeah, we got some cool games lined up. Uh, we have some good tech stuff to look into and uh, I think uh, what like there, there's a little bit of movie news in there yeah a little okay. bit of movie stuff coming up all right so what's our first article here oh uh, we touched on this before but let's take another look at it we got some 8k news <clears throat> yeah 8k and this is from um, tech radar techradar.com um, basically the sharps Aquos uh, TV, they have a 70 inch TV which is uh, available globally now, which is great. Um, we actually saw the, um, the 80 inch version that's marketed in Japan. It was uh, beautiful to look at. Yeah, it was a very stunning display. Um, that one was uh, shown at the IT month and the uh, photo for that is up here actually. We saw that one and that's an 80 inch that we saw. But the uh, 70 inch one that they're marketing is the uh, LC70X500E. And it's the first 8K TV to go on sale in Europe and around the world. And it goes for a measly 14,700 US dollars. So, you know, if you uh, <laughs> want a nice picture in your room or, you know, you're setting up like a, a little game room somewhere. Yep. Definitely, yep. you know, because who doesn't have 14 grand to kick around? Uh, of course, pocket change, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. come on. I, I think I left mine in my other shorts. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, the, we have the lack of... I mean, obviously, the, sometimes the technology comes before the content. And in this case, yeah, for sure, there's no AK content almost anywhere available. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's one or two clips that you can test it out with. And uh, I know Sharp was running some kind of AK content for their, their screen to, to uh, show it off. But uh, the amount of content right now is almost zero. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering how long it'll take before there's there's enough media available in order to really take advantage of that. That's true. That's true. Uh, next news story is from Variety.com. De Deadpool 2, uh, David Leach, the director from Deadpool 2, is to direct Jessica Chastain and Jake Glyenhall in The Division, which is uh, related to, of course, the video game. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty awesome news. Uh, a little bit further into the article, they were also talking about how uh, Dwayne Johnson was trying to snatch him up uh, in order to um, direct the, the Fast and Furious spin-off, uh, which uh, is, is looking to star him and Jason Statham. Yeah, yep, that's right. They said, uh, well, David Leach used to be a stunt coordinator um, uh, that turned director for John Wick. Yeah. And that was an amazing movie. And then he uh, jumped on the Sherry's Theron uh, action movie, Atomic Blunt. I have not seen that. I have not seen that either, but I was, I was really, you know, excited about it seeing the trailers. And then it just sort of got lost in the, the other blockbusters that sort of came out around that time. Oh, yeah? Okay. we got to try and check that out. But, uh, yeah, the early buzz from Deadpool 2 motivated Dwayne Johnson to aggressively pursue him. And so he could direct the spinoff for Fast and Furious. And now he's doing The Division, so that's good news for that. Yeah. Uh, fans of that franchise. <laughs> okay. Next up, we got the PUBG. PUBG yeah. news. We have a. They have an added. They they've added armor vehicle mode, and an underground cave system to its four x four map. So the yeah, the the latest test patch on PC found a model for a new armored version of the game's UAZ off road vehicle, and the PUBG rep. Uh, said on Reddit that the new armored vehicle was specifically designed for an unannounced event mode. Yeah, no, it's still going to use the same uh, four by four map, but by adding the uh, the tunnel systems into it, it actually gives you a, a lot more um, area to play with in in depth. Yeah, that's that's a separate thing. Uh, the event mode is one thing, and then the other one will be the the new codename Savage map, and yeah. it will be expanded. It's still four by four, which I think is small for that game. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they're expanding it by ad adding some tunnels underground. So that yeah. should, if you've ever wanted to, you know, do some cave stuff. You yeah, know. I, I, I saw some concept art for it. And, um, you know, the, the layout that they were showing is, you know, just basically uh, almost like a big volcano opening. And you drop in and then the tunnels kind of spread out under the map underneath and come out at different points at the bottom of the map. That's awesome. They said um, they actually modeled a lot of it um, from the real world cave systems found in Thailand. 
Yeah, so yeah. That so was, that, that, that should interesting. be interesting to see. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, next article we got up, Ryzen 7. Oh, good, some new Ryzen 7 news. The Ryzen 7 2700X was overclocked to 6 gigahertz with uh, liquid nitrogen 2 cooling. Uh, within 24 hours of the release, the overclocking world records were shattered by, um, this was by DeBauer and Neo. And um, they have a video up on YouTube. The link will be in the description. Actually, the sorry, this is from Tweaktown. Dot com. The link will be on their site, so please go visit Tweaktown and check out the link through them. And uh, yeah, so that, that's the guy right there, and he's uh, showing off the Asus ROG, um, what is it? Crosshair 7 Hero. And they reached an insane 6,010 megahertz, which is incredible. It's really amazing. And they cooled it to an incredible 100, minus 190 degrees Celsius. Um, using the liquid nitrogen and um, yeah they the Ryzen chip this one can super you know overclock because uh, it doesn't have the overclocking bug that the first generation had that's pretty cool and they also said at 5.7 gigahertz uh, running at 1.55 volts and memory at 1.95 volts it broke 8 core CPU world records and even beat similar 8 core Intel Skylake X processors 400 me megahertz faster than that at 6.1 gigahertz which wow. is really amazing yeah. so good job to Ryzen for making a really awesome chip yeah yeah that brings a lot of you know hope for the, the future of chip development true true that <laughs> oh you already got it up I got it up for you there you go <laughs> all right sweet okay so this one I am kind of excited about and yeah you were talking to me are... before about this one yeah you? yeah this was um I saw some some uh ads pop up on YouTube when I was uh researching some other stuff um, and so uh, Battletech uh, looks fantastic um, it is kind of a combination of like uh, a turn-based role-playing game yeah um, the, uh, the the cutscenes in it look absolutely spectacular uh, huge huge backstory nice um, you know basically it's about a deposed queen yeah. who's uh, kind of rallying the clans in order to uh, fight her uncle uh, and take back her, her kingdom and uh, you basically manage a mercenary team. Evidently it's a mecha based, turn based tactical strategy game. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really awesome. I should mention this, the screenshot we grabbed because we, I, I learned about this from uh, Tweak Town yeah. and uh, not, not, uh, good for them for putting up this link. However, when I checked the deal on the Frostpunk and Battletech for 22% off, it seems like the deal's already expired or they finished their sale. So. That's just something to be aware of. Um, <clears throat> Although I, I, did, I did see it up on Steam, and the deluxe edition was going for 639 NT, so a little over, uh, what would that be like? Well, I have uh, the prices here. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I, I got that ready. Um, yeah, so what do we have? Frostpunk and Battletech were just released, and um, they said that... Uh, Battletech is uh, ra being rated at 69% positive, which is pretty good, at 40 bucks US. And the digital deluxe de delish delish edition, yeah. <laughs> i got to slow down a bit, is 50 bucks. Um, it includes digital content like the art book, novella, and digital comic. However, if you're not hardcore fans of the series, you may want to wait or something because it doesn't have any additional game content, so no DLC for the game. But if you like the additional artwork and stuff, maybe it's, it'll be up your alley. Yeah, um, and if you don't want to go for the deluxe edition right away, but you decide you want to, uh, they do actually have that as uh, uh, downloadable content um, right. to upgrade. So, yeah, and that's Battletech up on screen there right now, and Frostpunk. Uh, yeah, so they're both in the top selling chart for for Steam. Frostpunk and Battletech both, and uh, Eleven Bit Studios. Uh, Frostpunk is getting positive reviews from gamers at eighty four percent positive, which is pretty good. Um, it's a survival city buildy city builder strategy game. Uh, retailing for 30 bucks on Steam. So there you go. Um, by the way, the, the downloads for that are super small. Frostpunk's only 4.7 gigs and Battletech's only 8.8 .8 gigs. So really small downloads, but uh, some good high quality content. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's take uh, another look. Oh yeah, I should show you the Frostpunk here. You can throw it up on yours. Yeah, there we go. That's the Frostpunk. Yeah, that's Frostpunk. That, that looks really awesome. If you have to, if you can create a city in this kind of uh, 
uh, game like that looks like that. That's that's really awesome, man. Yeah, the the um, detail in there is, is absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, uh, next up we got the Intel. Uh, they are offloading their virus scanning to its GPUs to lower CPU usage. Um, basically, uh, Rick Echevarria, its Intel security division VP, said that with accelerated memory memory scanning. Uh, that it's handled by Intel's iGPU, the Integrated Graphics Processing Unit. Uh, basically, what it does is it takes all that processing power that would be used by your computer to scan all your files and just puts it on the internal graphics so you don't notice a hit on your system. Um, early benchmarks showed like 20, uh, it went down from 20% uh, CPU usage down to like 2%, which is really nice. It's yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's quite an improvement. I think it's very smart thinking. Yeah. Because, you know, you always need a little bit more response, uh, re, you know, responsive, responsivity? <laughs> Responsiveness. <laughs> Responsiveness, there we go. There we go. <laughs> the uh, new threat detection technology is available on Intel's 6th, 7th, and 8th gen processors. And Microsoft has teamed with Intel and the changes are coming to the Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, the ATP, later this month. Which is good because, I mean, kind of managing Windows Defender in order to, like, you know, not interfere with other things that you're doing. It's just like all of a sudden you're in, the, you're, you're in the middle of something and a bunch of your process just gets eaten up by yeah. Windows Defender. And, yeah. I mean, granted, uh, more recent versions have been pretty good. For not taking too much time yeah but, e first... but even still like if you're in the middle of like rendering a video and then all of a sudden windows defender decides you know it's like hey i, I need this yeah and the first just... several months of window windows 10 release so it's just i'm trying to use my computer to make content or whatever and suddenly yeah. i took a massive hit i'm like why is it so slow and it's like oh windows is doing its thing yeah. thanks you know <laughs> but, it's like uh, and and you tell it later and it's like oh, okay five minutes later <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. 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 Way, way, way to give me time because, you know, rendering a video, easily done in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Of course. Yeah. Um, it says that Intel is working with uh, antivirus companies to get their software uh, working as well for this. So that's pretty good. Yeah. I'm going to put that back to here. There we go. That's yours. Yeah. Oh. I missed that one. That's okay. It's Serious Sam 4. Serious Sam 4. Yeah. I haven't actually played any of the uh, previous Serious Sams. However, I heard they're uh, really awesome experiences. Okay, so you got this headline? Go. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, Co Team announced the Serious Sam 4 Planet Badass. I like the name. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, reveal coming at E3 2018. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome. Um, not much is known about the Series M4. However, the, there's a trailer and its brief description uh, suggests that the game will feature much larger environments and, uh, and uh, of course, improved graphics over the previous franchises. Um, and the last installment was Series M3. Uh, BFE, which was launched in 2011, so that was sure. quite a long time ago, which is why I haven't heard anything about it recently, I suppose. Yeah, I, I wonder though, is, uh, is that a uh, screen cap from a cutscene, or is that actual gameplay? Yeah, I don't know about that. That yeah. was just on the, no, by the way, this is from the WCCFtech.com uh, site, and they uh, they have that graphic up for there. Um, as for... The next one I wanted to, that goes right into our next topic, which is Serious Sam VR. So you can actually play, you know, Serious Sam in VR. It's um, early access on Steam. <clears throat> it's called uh, Serious Sam VR: The Last Hope, and uh, basically, Crow Team has uh, teamed up with HTC Vive um, in order to present this shooter, which looks really awesome. Here's a couple of screenshots here. I got. Um, <clears throat> I got this one. Um, it says that there's two planets in the early access build, Earth and Pl Pladeon. Pladeon. Pladeon? Pladeon, I guess. And so you have Forgotten Temples, Alien Monoliths, and Dangerous Deserts, and uh, evidently some really huge boss monsters, which are awesome. And here's another shot. They, they basically put a green screen and put the actor and then uh, put the gameplay behind him so you can see. I guess if I put that up on screen, that would be good. There we go. 
And uh, yeah, but uh, it looks really great. I tried to not pick the gory shots because there's a lot of blood flying and stuff. So if you're squeamish about that, maybe this isn't the game for you. But it has lots of monsters to kill. Yeah, and if, if that's the least gory pick that you, you, you could find, that's, <laughs> yeah, no, that's this pretty is, impressive. <laughs> this, this is like one of three that didn't have too much blood in it. So I was like, okay, yeah. I, I can show that because, you know, I want to yeah. make sure. Go check out the trailer. It's really awesome for the... Um, uh, uh, VR of Serious Sam. It says they used a Serious Engine 4.5 in order to swarm the player with hundreds of enemies at once. Can you imagine in VR and just all these enemies rushing towards you? You can see a bit of it in the trailer. It's really looks it looks really crazy. I, I didn't actually see the trailer. I'll have to go check that out. Sounds good. All right, all right let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, here we go. I just throw this right, right yep. up. Okay, so, Asus Ares. Um, basically, rather than lose product-specific series for Radian graphics cards, uh, Asus has changed names for uh, Radian cards only. Uh, basically, what this is, is it's uh, basic corporate rebranding uh, in order to, you know, be able to shoot through loopholes. Well, yeah, they... <sighs> It, it kind of sucks. I'm I'm not a big fan of what NVIDIA has pulled. Um, you know, obviously NVIDIA wants to have partners who are online with their marketing and they want to be, you know, the team with the strongest. And I get that. But at the same time, telling partners you can't use the same branding of like top of the line card for Radeon that you do for NVIDIA is kind of a it's kind of a dick move. I'm, mm. I'm going to say that right out. Um, basically, NVIDIA in, um, implemented a GeForce partner program, and this program says that if you use this branding with the NVIDIA cards, you can no longer use it with any other manufacturer's cards being Radeon, of course, right? Yeah. Um, Asus has changed its name for Radeon cards only, so instead of proudly displaying Asus as we're so fondly accustomed to, yeah. it'll, it'll now have errors on the cards, which is... Okay, with, 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 you know, I mean, whatever. Like, I'm, you know, I'm I'm a fan of the company. You know, I I, I like many of their products. As this makes know. good. Yeah, stuff. I yeah. have like a tablet, my phone, you know, um, good stuff. Been very reliable, excellent features. And, yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, they can call it what they want as long as I know that what I'm getting is is the same quality that they put out. That's that's fine. Um, you're right. I, I didn't really uh, appreciate. You know, Nvidia is like, you know, no, sorry, we're not going to share. Yeah. You but know. I mean, it's just <clears throat> if you are if if you're you know competing against your competitor or something, then I, I get that. And competition is good for the market and you know on yeah. fair terms. But how about if Radeon turned around and said, okay, you can only use this specific name with Radeon? Then I think you know, it, uh, either foot the shoe fits on. Yeah. You know, whether it's NVIDIA or Radeon, pulling this kind of stunt wouldn't have been good. And I, I would have called it the same thing for, for Radeon, too. Well, I mean, you know, the, the the real problem with this is the fact that the people who suffer the most are, are the consumers. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because basically by, by, you know, NVIDIA trying to pull this is, you know, they're they're effectively trying to limit their their the, the consumer choice involved. Yeah. You know, yeah. like if you, if you prefer, you know, branding with like, you know, um, one particular manufacturer for, for, um, your computer, but you know, you, you like NVIDIA parts. If Asus didn't play ball, then that would basically mean that, you know, it's like, well, who, who do I choose? Asus or, you know, NVIDIA. Like, there's, there's an argument, argument to be said that NVIDIA has the, maybe the greatest uh, sway or power in the market right now. Um, you know, don't, obviously it's not like a hard and, and fast, like this is the way it is. I'm not saying that, but they, they obviously do have a lot of pull. Yeah. And for them to go ahead and do this, I mean, so Zeus has a choice whether they can, uh, you know, say, okay, well, we'll keep our ROG branding, which is now only for uh, G in NVIDIA GeForce cards. We can keep that and create something new for, um, NVIDIA 
or we can give ROG to NVIDIA and create something for Radeon. So yeah. it's it's a hard choice because, you know, as a gamer, you've heard of the ROG line for, for years now. So you're looking, you're going to be searching for, oh, I want the latest latest NVIDIA ROG card. And there's nothing there because they had, they said, we won't play ball with NVIDIA. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to, you know, stand our ground. Okay. So what happens to these products that don't get sold? Yeah. So it's no matter what. And of course, you know, uh, Radon's still a huge player. They've yeah. got great chips, great graphics cards, um, used for mining and gaming uh, alike. And uh, for them to have to decide or choose a side, it, that's not very good. <sighs> on to the next next topic. Let's try not to leave it up on the screen all the time. I want to get back to the main screen after a minute or so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So next one, we have uh, Street Fighter V's next DLC character is a new female and Bison clone, Falk. Um, I, I watched the demo video of that. Um, it's, it's nice. She's got some, some pretty good moves. Uh, looks all right. I, I don't know that I'm super impressed by it, but, you know, I, this, it's been a while since I've played any of the, the recent Street Fighter yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you the current roster so you, or there are any of their yeah. hyper moves or whatever. Well, I, I, I followed <laughs> another video and, and, you know, saw us like, you know, some of the, the old standby characters like, like Ryu and Kami and whatnot are still in there. That's good. Uh, but yeah, they've, they've upped the roster far beyond what what it know. used to be that yeah. the basic eight and the yeah. 12 with the uh, the new challengers and stuff. Yeah. Um, it says Falk was built to be an alternate clone for M. Bison. She infuses psycho power to objects and releases it through her staff named Harmony. And uh, Falk was released on the 24th of April, so just uh, five days ago. Uh, six bucks if you buy the DLC or 100,000 uh, in-game money uh, units. So there you go. Okay. Yeah, the, the um, character moves uh, look like, you know, more speed over power, but, you know, still one or two, like, really strong, powerful finishing moves. So. Cool. Cool, cool. All right, next one up. This one is from DualShockers.com. Uh, PC version of Ag uh, Agony will have the option to remove the censorship. Yeah. Um, pretty cool, actually. Uh, I got to say, I was, I was impressed by this article. Um, it's a little bit sad that, you know, for, for consoles that they, you know, um, had to uh, censor themselves as much as they could in order to not have an adult-only um rating on, on, on the game. Yeah, because a lot of consoles wouldn't allow adult only games. Like, you know, they're they're pretty strict. Like Japan is less so because you can have some really smutty games or something. Yeah, Japan, but, but but then when you look at like, you know, uh China for example, um they're a lot more um strict with their with their content. Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I don't think it's too bad here. Well, I mean, we have all these shooting games with blood flying everywhere, so I mean yeah, yeah. but I mean that, that that game still rates as a mature and not a AO rating, yeah. which yeah. you know wouldn't wouldn't fly. Um, basically, that if they got an AO rating, they would never see a console release. So it's only PC. Yeah, and so that would drastically hurt the game's you know profitability, profitability and um, exposure to the audience. Yeah. Well, upon purchase, um, the PC game is actually um, the same as the console games. Um, so in order to remove the cens censorship, uh, there's an actual uh, patch that you need. Um, now, uh, what they were saying is. Uh, there's nothing that they can do in order to um, adjust the, the contents on the consoles um, just because it, it's, it's too much of a, a nightmare in order to set something like that up. Yeah. Uh, and even development-wise, it's not really practical for them to do. Well, it, it, it leads into legalities and yeah. stuff because if you purchase a mature game and your, your kids, you know, um, able to play it and then suddenly they can download a patch which yeah. makes it adults only then yeah so for the people who, who actually own the console version of the game um, they are saying that they're going to release some information on um, how you can use that in order to get a PC version of the game and you know get the, the patch for that yeah that's good and um, yeah the, the good part about this is that um, Agony was a Kickstarter backers who bought the console version of Agony will be able to convert it into a PC version and details will be on Kickstarter. So if you go to dualshockers.com, you'll find the article there. And also we will have an Amazon affiliate link uh, below. If you do 
uh, want to grab Agony, please do help our channel out and <laughs> purchase Agony through us. That would be really awesome. Uh, it'll be up a little bit later on. I have to adjust the, the uh, link there. So thank you very much for that. Um, Agony was set to release on March 30th, 2018 uh, on PS4, PC, and Xbox One, but has been delayed, but uh, no set date yet. Hopefully soon, in a couple months or something. We don't know yet. Okay, so what do we got next? You, you can sit back a little bit in, in the frame, yeah? There we go. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know you can't see it on the camera, but you're, you're leaning, leaning kind of. So you need to lean back a little bit. Oh, there you go, yeah. Now you can see. <laughs> okay, so yep. let's see. Good. Uh, how do you say that? Shem Shemui Shem Shemu Shemu Shemu. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shemu. <laughs> Actually, it should be Shemui yeah. Shemui because of the Japanese. Yeah. yeah. Right. <clears throat> okay. So first screenshots released for Shemui One and Two Remaster. Uh, I was looking at this, and uh, by the looks of it, um, you can actually uh, adjust. Um, all the like the video quality um, or the the um, controls to either the modern version or the classic version. Yeah, this um, this remaster is actually from the uh, Dreamcast version way back when. Yeah, so that that's pretty good, and um, yeah, uh, so the, the, those those are some of the modernized features and including um, PC graphics options and an updated user interface, and also you can enjoy the original Japanese or English voiceovers. So that's pretty awesome. You have another shot right after this too, oh, for um, yeah. Ta da! There, we, there go. we go. So, still looks a little blocky, but I mean, considering it's coming from Dreamcast and it's going to be on PC with that kind of um, rendering, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad, and you get to enjoy it, you know, remastered. So it'll be definitely higher quality, which is good. Cool. You think you might want to check that out? Um. Possibly, possibly that um, it does kind of have like like almost sort of, sort of a uh, old Vice City feel with the graphics. You know what I mean? Like like, like the remastered version. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It has a uh, jujitsu combat and sleuthing and R RPG elements, and of course, it's a uh, uh, Shenmue is really um, famous for its mini games. Yeah. So that might be something to check out soon. Okay. Next right. one up will be the special edition. Uh, I gotta slow down. Special, special edition. edition. <laughs> Avengers: Infinity War Acer laptops. You know, you came across the article. Yeah. Um, I don't even. I think that was another like you know ad came up on on YouTube as as looking at some um, Avengers: Infinity War related videos. Yeah. Um, just kind of seeing a comparison about like how many people were. Uh, doing spoiler and non-spoiler reviews, stuff like that, um, and and what sort of things that they were covering. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was an ad uh, that popped up, so I decided to, to look into it a little bit further. Now, i, I got to say that this is only on Amazon India. These laptops are only on Amazon India, as far as I the, the article say. However, when I actually I went to go check, because you know we do research before we do our episodes, and uh, I couldn't see them anywhere. I actually went to Amazon.in and checked, yeah. and I was looking for Avengers laptops, Acer, and I checked all the things. I couldn't see them, but maybe they're sold out or going to be released soon. I don't know. Or maybe they detected the IP and wouldn't give me the special. I'm not sure. That's, that's quite possible. I, I have seen a lot of that. Yeah. But I'm not ruling it out. Right. <laughs> um, however, these laptops look really, really good. Uh, we have another shot of that, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, so this is the Captain America version. There we go. Okay, so um, now uh, each, each one of these versions um, is Captain America, Iron Man, and uh, Thanos. Um, and they're all uh, for different models. Uh, so the Captain America one, as you can see, is the Acer Aspire 6. Uh, let's see what kind of specs that we have on that um, full HD 15.6 inch screen um, with the iconic star and the nice little sort of graphics print in the background um, it gives sort of like a 
you know, subtle effect. Uh, we have uh, eighth gen core i5 eight. <laughs> sorry, it's really hard to read. <laughs> Your screen's so dark. <laughs> no, it's because the light's reflecting off oh. the screen. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, i5 uh, 8250U. Mm -hmm. And an NVIDIA, G, uh, NVIDIA G, <laughs> now I'm doing it. G, uh, GeForce uh, MX150, uh, two gigabytes. Eh. Two gigabytes of GD, GDDR5 you. RAM. All right. And <laughs> on board, it's got four or eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and you can get up to 16 gigs on that with one terabyte of storage. Next one I want to throw up is the this one here, which is the Thanos edition. It looks pretty awesome. And uh, it's a full HD 15.6 inch IPS screen with an i5 7300HQ CPU, a GeForce GTX 1050, four gigs. And it comes on board with eight gigs DDR4 RAM up to a max of 32, which is pretty good. Uses a 128 gigabyte SSD with dual exhaust fans. Okay, and that brings us to Mr. Stark himself. There you go. Uh, the Iron Man edition, uh, Acer Swift 3, uh, this was the one that I um, actually, when I first looked it up, this came up right on the, the Acer, uh, Acer website. Uh, but then I looked at it and uh, found the information for all three on, under uh, the Tech Radar. Um, so, the, you know, they all, they all have more information on that. But uh, just, Yeah, that's right. This article is from TechRadar.com. Yeah. i got to remember to say that at the beginning. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so anyway... Um, what What's the specs? What's the specs? Let's yeah. go. <laughs> we, got, we got more shit. Okay, so uh, full HD 14 inch IPS screen. Uh, eighth generation in, uh, Intel Core. Uh, again, i5 uh, 8250U. Uh, Intel UHD graphics 620. Now, no, there, there's a point, it's not NVIDIA graphics. Not, I was just about to say that. Yeah. Um, with uh, eight gigabytes of RAM and uh, two hundred fifty-six gigabyte um, SSD. That's right. But the good thing is, because it's not using NVIDIA graphics, the uh, Intel UHD graphics chip actually runs a lot, uh, uses a ton less power. Yeah, yeah. So the good thing is that Acer claims that you can get up to ten hours battery life on a full charge from this laptop. So yeah. that's really awesome. Yeah, that's that, that's pretty good. <clears throat> No, no telling as to how much the Iron Man's uh, chest emblem, how much power that will draw. Or yeah. maybe it will, it's self-sustaining. Who knows? Yeah. Well, on, on, <laughs> on the Acer website, uh, one of the things that I did see uh, was, uh, I guess, the, the stock background image. It's yeah. not your standard uh, Windows, but it's an actual like um, themed background for, for Iron Man. Ooh, cool. uh, that looked pretty spectacular. I'm assuming that the Captain America and Thanos ones uh, have the same, but I didn't look any further into it so you might want to check that out especially if you're you know a fan of of you know marvel or well they they actually did say i mean these these production units are, are really awesome however they're very limited quantity and mm -hmm. there's no telling if they will ship them outside or whatever but you know you might want to try and check it out and see yeah 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 you never know especially if like you know you happen to know somebody in india and <laughs> there you are. There you are. yeah maybe maybe it's true all right, next up we got the uh, NBA Playgrounds 2. And th that has been officially announced and they will be launching later this year. Uh, Playgrounds 2, basically the it's a massive game with uh, <clears throat> 200 current and retired NBA players. Looks a lot like um, NBA Jam. Uh, if that is NBA Jam or is, you know inspired, it does look very similar, like a next-gen version of NBA Jam. I love that game back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. He's on fire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a new worldwide ranked league system, as well as the uh, season mode. Um, it, season mode will be a new single player experience. Uh, you can also have a regular season, which leads to playoffs, and you can compete in the NBA championship. Um, better matchmaking in this game, thanks to dedicated servers. And it's launching for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC in 2018. And uh, this is uh, PlayStation Lifestyle? Yeah, PlayStation .net. Lifestyle.net. Okay. On this one. Um, yeah, it, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. You know, uh, one of those sort of uh, chill out with your buddies kind of 
fill an afternoon sort of game. Yeah, yeah. Sounds really awesome. I'd love to try and get this and do a four player or something. Yeah, yeah that would be really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, available on uh, PS4, Xbox One, uh, Nintendo Switch, and the PC. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh. The headlines are going to be on your phone because they won't necessarily be on the on the screenshot. Okay. Uh... There we go. It's already up. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So, from uh, superdataresearch.com, uh, U.S. digital game markets. Uh, Far Cry 5? Yeah, Far Cry 5. Okay. Yeah. Um, 2.5 million sold. Uh, digital sales 500% over Primal. Primal was their last title that they released, and uh, that was uh, what uh, a few years back now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two years ago, they released Far Cry Pi- Far Cry Primal, and uh, yeah, so they've done a five. But the the five hundred percent over Primal is a is a statistic because they've sold an estimated two point five million digital units across console and PC. On console, the Far Cry 5's digital launch was up five hundred percent from the digital launch, not. Not including the actual physical copies and stuff. And just it just goes to show how much this has improved for uh, purchasing content online versus yeah. a few years back. Yeah. Uh, what else we got there? Um, what's next? Oh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Our right, next article up is going to be about Hellboy. It's a Hellboy board game, and the Kickstarter on this raised. One million in about five seconds. Well, I think he's exaggerating, but um, it was crazy because usually Kickstarters run a month. Yeah. And within a day and a half, it had reached a million. Yeah, and and that was like way over goal. So you know uh, they're 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 doing all right. Uh, I've seen a couple of um, shots of like you know the game pieces and, and whatnot. It looks like it could be, you know, it's like a figure based board game. Yeah. 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 Uh, looks like it could be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, they actually asked for uh, 140000 to start uh, production and shipping and everything else like that. And the game is at $1 million right now. 28 days left on its oh, Kickstarter. Here we go. Let's take a look at those. Yeah. And uh, our, our <laughs> video is blocking it slightly, but there's some maps that you can see there and uh, uh, pictures of the figurines. And this is from uh, Kotaku.com, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the way the board pieces lay out, it almost looks like, you know, like Catan with the, with the board expansions. I, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I don't know. <laughs> That's fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, but the, the detail on the pieces look pretty pretty cool too. It does. It looks really nice. I'm, I've always I, I always like um, figurines and mi- miniatures and yeah, stuff. And, yeah. Well, I mean you know. that's another reason why I was so excited about the Battle Tech was because I actually used to play the the um, tabletop Battle Tech game. Nice, nice. Really. Um, and when I was in high school, we'd even like uh, we went and uh, did castings. Of, oh, the, cool. of the figurines and cool. you know just made them out of lead nice yeah right that's awesome um from tweaktown.com we have the arena brawler my heroes fail my hero <laughs> my hero one's justice and they have announced this for a switch and uh basically it is an arena brawler and it looks pretty cool um i i really want to say lots and lots of good stuff about this game i i can't really tell for sure and there's a reason for that and that's coming up uh basically nintendo took to their youtube channel to announce this game um the premise this anime comes from shonen jump which is a very famous manga in japan it's been going on for x number of years like oh, since... I, we're, we're into decades now yeah decades yeah. yeah um evidently it's super popular and they're gonna do an arena brawler um, this is the one I want to show you because I tried to get, there's not much media for this online and I was trying to take uh, screenshots from the actual YouTube channel and as you can see here, um, yeah, this is, first off, Nintendo uploaded in 720p, so it's going to look a little bit rough to begin with, but their bitrate on their upload was just horrendous. Yeah, like you have when you play it out it looks pretty cool but the explosions could have been sharper and like yeah. it's just all pixelated it's a pixelated mess and it's 
this game looks pretty good from what I can tell, but it's hard to be sure because it looks like this. Like this one here, you can tell it's pixelated and the explosions and stuff. I wanted to grab some really nice, and this is some of the best I got. <laughs> well, and it, it looks like, you know, the, the characters are modeled in, in 3D, and I think they're probably using the, the uh, tune shader for, for their skins. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, very similar to the effect that they, they did in uh, Appleseed. Yeah. Uh, it, although with more of a, slightly more of an anime quality or manga quality um, art style. I don't. I don't know anything about. Have you heard about what my hero one's justice? Have you heard anything about? No, that? actually, this um, reading this article is about the the first that I that heard too. of it. But yeah. I actually haven't been following a lot of recent anime. So yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, in this screenshot, you can see actually there's four characters on screen. There's uh, there's you got the guy in the front, and then there's actually one, two, three that are brawling back there. As a, as a, you know, uh, this is one of the cleanest ones I got. So you have a wide open arena and you're fighting inside here with some characters. It looks pretty awesome. Yeah, they, um, they refer to that like like with the um, the four characters on screen and whatnot as uh, uh, sidekick mode. Yeah. So who knows if you'll be able to do like player versus player or, you know, yeah. f hopefully four player would be really awesome. Um, they're, they're speculating about that. And this one is a, a screenshot. This girl is actually like lifting her powers, like lifting up rocks and stuff. And it looks pretty, pretty cool. Then again, it's all pixelated. So it's like, uh, did you Nintendo, get, please. Did you get the shot from up top where she's dropping all the grenades or? No, it was, no. it was a pixelated mess. I couldn't use okay. it. Yeah. yeah so th 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 this is like some of the cleanest shots I could get. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to show something cool, but I also not have it be a blur on screen. So yeah. Nintendo, please fix your upload bit rate so that we can <laughs> show your cool games in like really awesome detail. Cause right now it's, ugh. Really terrible. Yeah. But the game does look like pretty fast paced. You know, um, I, I did watch the video. Uh, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put too much hope into uh, a lot of story. <laughs> but enough. you know, um, as as far as like you know, uh, fast paced tournament fighting action, I yeah. think this game probably has it. Yeah. Um, and as far as the uh, multiplayer mode, um, it is Nintendo, so it's it's pretty likely. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's jump on that. Yeah. Wait, wait, I got it. You got it? Because you got to go past these ones. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're getting to our last article for today, which is... Rainbow Skies and Rainbow Moon uh, pre-order are open. And this game's going to launch in 2018 for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. And the pre-orders are open now. Um, this is from PlayAsia.com. So uh, as I said, PlayAsia's got um, support for international shipping and this kind of stuff. That's how I get a lot of my RPGs and other things that I can't find in Taiwan. So uh, definitely go check them out. They have uh, models, character models, and other stuff open as well. Now, as, as is really, really expected from uh, PlayStation, um, is that they have like uh, really sort of beautiful rich in, in environments in their in their role-playing games and you know um by the looks of this i, I don't think it's going to be any different yeah yeah this does look quite nice um so basically you have your standard edition for 30 bucks and limited edition for 50 bucks uh 29.99 49.99 limited editions will only be manufactured based on demand and so if you hurry up and do your limited edition order maybe you'll still be able to get that i'm not too sure um, looks like uh, maybe the lim limited editions may have been cut off already, so we'll see. Um, basically, it comes with a game, manual, a melody, two, two CD original soundtrack, a book of knowledge, which is like 100 pages of um, extra story, a double-sided map, a number certificate, and a collector's box. So uh, from what I can tell, the, the game looks really awesome. That, that looks really interesting. I like I like RPGs and that kind of stuff, and especially with this kind of feel to it almost has like a secret of mana kind of vibe going on so uh i'm really interested to see how this turns out thank you that was the game i was thinking <laughs> well i mean it's this is an isometric whereas uh, a yeah. secret of mana is like a, a perspective up i yeah. can't remember that but yeah isometric is uh, on the box and whatever but yeah um it looks really awesome so I'll, i'm psyched to try it cool yeah. any thoughts for today um 
Well, there's there's definitely a couple of things that I was really excited about, and you know, other things that were were interesting. Um, uh, one of the exciting things was, uh, well, the BattleTech for one. Um, yeah. I, I really do like the look at those Acer laptops, um, and I think uh, the other thing, um, this this the Street Fighter was cool. Yeah. Don't forget, we saw Avengers, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, well, I mean, I, I I mentioned that sort of before uh, about uh, looking up other people's um, spoiler or non-spoiler reviews. Uh, so the other day we actually put up a non-spoiler review, and you can check out this card here. I'll put I'll throw it up uh, maybe in the center or something like that. I'll throw it up. Okay, I'll put up the card. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen the movie, go see it. It's, yeah, it's definitely go see it. Really um, awesome. You know. Just to you know, recap overall what I was uh, saying about it in the review is just that um, no no moment is wasted in that film, um, and like no no character appearance is wasted. Like ev everything that happens in this movie happens for a reason and a really good reason, and uh, it's just it, it's an amazing film. We all we, we both thought that all the characters like all the actors did an amazing job in their roles. Like yeah yeah it's yeah really really good. Yeah, and it's just like every everything was so stunning and just works so well together. Like you know, the the Russos did an incredible job on this film. Yeah, and so far I actually haven't come across any any opinions that that you know uh, have disagreed with that. There's been some very very minor nitpicks, but like most of them are, you know, uh, just personal preference things. You know, like oh, I think they could have done this better. Yeah, but you know, o o overall. Remember not to spoil it for your friends. Thanos demands your silence. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the stones to make it happen. Yeah, he, he's got the. <laughs> hey, I like that. That's good. All right, guys. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, please do subscribe if you like this video. Hit like and uh, click the bell icon to get notified if you want to see more content like this. Uh, also, if there's anything specific that you you want to see from us, um, or if there's uh, any corrections um, to something we might have said on the show, uh, thoughts, comments, whatever, please put them down below. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, you can also reach us on Twitter as seen by the... Yeah, we throw, throw that at one oh, more there, we there we go. There yeah, we go. Yeah, 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 there we go. So feel free to reach us on, on Twitter or on text bin, leave some comments. That would be great. And um, yeah, if you, if you enjoyed the live show and want to see something, you know, something else, including the show, like a little bit more TV or movie content or... Or, or little, po possibly little less, something um, else. reviews of, of uh, mobile games or... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, whatever. it's possible. You know, it's possible. any specific sort of uh, tech items, gadgets that you might be interested in. Let um, us know. Let us know and, and we'll do our best to, to find out and get that information back to you. All right, so thanks a lot for tuning in. That's, uh, that's, me, that's us for today. So See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>